Welcome back to Fight News Now. John Pollock, John Ramdine, and Robin Black with you. Last week, we were discussing the UFC card coming up in Pittsburgh, and when we had 14 fights announced for this wow. card, you knew the UFC was somewhat gambling with this amount of fights. Something would have to give. Well, <laughs> Tim Means pulled from their main event. That's what gave. And I thought, it. okay, I... this is the biggest problem, but unfortunately, there have been many fighters who have had to hit the proverbial hit stop oh, on the way to yeah. Pittsburgh. Here are just a look at some of the affected fights. Of course, John mentioned the main event off the top, which Alex Oliveira is now inserted to take on Don Cerrone. Brandon Thatch has had a medical clearance issue, and his fight with Sierra Bahar Derzada has now been moved to March the 5th. Sarah Morass had to pull out due to an injury, so they're looking for an opponent for Lauren Murphy. John Lineker had to pull out of his fight with Cody Garbrandt, and they've been able to find Augusto Mendez, who will make his UFC debut on just a couple of days notice. And then a hand injury sidelines Trevor Smith. So now Leonardo Augusto Gamaresh will need an opponent for this coming Sunday. So possible that some of these fights are salvaged, but the idea that we're gonna have 14 fights, probably unlikely, but maybe this is why the UFC for some cards, they, they bulk up on volume, knowing that something is gonna give and some fighters are gonna fall apart. But this card is being held together with duct tape, Randy. True, but it's, uh, this is a great time if you're a top prospect in mixed martial arts and you're around the 4 and 0, 5 and 0 mark and you're ready to go, the thing is you just got to stay ready to go, especially if you've been having conversations with the UFC saying, okay, yeah, if there's, as soon as there's something available, we'll get you on that card, like the Mendez fight. He's a legacy guy, so you know, okay, well, the legacy system is, is a very good system if you want to make that leap to the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Now you just have to stay ready to go. So when you get that phone call, it, you're not completely surprised. Yeah, and you're ready to go when it's a brand new fight for sure. And if you're Cowboy Cerrone and somebody goes down, you're like, well, no problem. Whoever they got, I'll fight that guy. And that's really cool. That's what Garbrandt was saying too. Cool. But there's other arguments. You know, there is sort of a, we all think as fans, come on, man, step up and yeah. fight. And when Dustin Poirier decided he wasn't going to fight at the last minute when he lost his opponent and, uh, you know, then he comes back and everybody was questioning him. Oh, Dustin, why are you doing that? All of a sudden he comes back and he lays a beating on Duffy. And it might have been five, six weeks later. It was a good length of time. He had to give up that paycheck, not fight on that while he was in shape. But you look back and wasn't Dustin Poirier brilliant? He got another marquee win against a rising guy in his weight division. Looked phenomenal doing it. Hindsight being 2020, Dustin Poirier made by far the correct decision and totally killed that. But then you see it the opposite way too. Augusto Mendez has nothing to lose on Sunday. At the, at the worst, he's going to lose this fight and then be given a second fight where he'll get a full camp for doing this favor last minute for the UFC. Cody Garbrandt, aside from obviously he wants to make his money on Sunday, but there is nothing to gain. An Augusto Mendez victory doesn't propel him anywhere to me in the, in the bantamweight division where a win over John Lineker, it's not even comparable. What was the prize for, for Cody Garbrandt with a victory over an opponent at the level of Lineker? Yeah, that's true, but at the same time, it's experience. You know, when uh, when, you, when it comes down to it, you look at uh, Demetrius Johnson, who he's faced, this is just valuable in-cage experience for uh, Cody Garbrandt. He's very, very young, only 24 years of age. So he has got a ton of time. And we all know, like as you pointed out, you beat John Lineker and then you beat somebody else. Guess what? UFC calls, you're fighting for the UFC 125-pound championship or 135-pound championship, depending. So it, you just have to be ready. You have to be ready and use this as experience. And for his case, yes, it, it, it might be a little bit longer road, but you have to take what you can, get that experience under your belt. Yeah, and I think it's super valuable because whether it's today or in three years or when all of a sudden one day he's the champion or fighting for the title, or way out there, you're going to fight a guy in one week's notice. Better this guy at this time when you're ready. And you... You know, Jeremy Horn notwithstanding, you can really peak four or five times a year. Like really peak, get in that shape, get mentally ready, put yourself in that physical shape. This next Sunday is one of those times for this kid. So he doesn't want to give that up. In the case of Brandon Thatch and C.R. Bahar Derzada, this was the fight I was most looking forward to on Sunday. I thought this was a really entertaining fight on paper for these two. It gets moved to March the 5th. And this was the strangest one of all. Brandon Thatch was given he was using some kind of medication ahead of this fight, which USADA said, that's not banned, you can use this. And then we found out within the state of Pennsylvania, you cannot use this ahead of time. So as a result, this fight has merely been moved two weeks to March the 5th. But to, to have this a week out from your fight and suddenly you've got to tack on more weeks to your training camp, you have this down to a science that I am fighting on this date and peaking everything for this date 
two weeks can make a major difference for two fighters. What's happening huge, to these guys? Huge difference in your how your weight is moving, in how you're periodizing your, your perfect fitness level, cardiovascular training, aerobic, anaerobic peak. All of these things are calculated. But the good news is it's happening to the other guy too. So if it was, a, uh, that's where these curveballs get weird. All of a sudden, you know, you're fighting a guy who is peaking and you came off the couch. Uh, in this case, these two guys both have the same uh, curveballs and that makes it better. While we're talking about it, you take Chad Mendez who gets a phone call, hey, do you wanna fight for the interim belt? We heard he made a half a million dollars. And people said, well, Chad Mendez isn't in shape to go fight Conor McGregor. Chad Mendez is thinking, that guy can't wrestle anyways. I'm to go fight him. He has to face a guy who has put himself in the perfect situation to win. But if you're Chad Mendes, what are you going to do? In, in 10 days, I can make half a million dollars and I get the chance to fight for the belt against a guy I think I can beat? You gotta take it. But it doesn't always work out. There's extra challenges in doing that. And that's what everybody on this card is facing. And maybe when we look back and use Dustin Poirier as that hindsight 2020 example, Poirier did not take that one. And he is now one step closer to making the big money fighting for belts. When you're looking at a unique situation like Brandon Thatch and C.R. Bahar Dezada, it essentially forces the two fighters. You almost have to take a mm -hmm. step back. It, and that goes against everything in your training. But when you have to prolong this for two more weeks and making your weight, it almost, like, what is your best advice? Like, do you almost have to taper off for a few days to not mess with everything that you've been working for this one date? I'd be very frustrated if I was Bahar Drazada who for did sure. nothing wrong here. For sure. It'll be more frustrating for him. Actually, it'll be pretty frustrating for both. They both just have to go and look at it. Okay, we have a brand new challenge. That challenge is for the, our trusted coaches, our trusted nutritionists, mm -hmm. all these people. We have to work with them and do what's right. Now, in these extra two weeks, you get one more new competition. How do we respond to it compared to how do they respond to it? You've got to be confident in your people, confident in your training, confident in your structure, your ability to change, your ability to handle stress, and believe, look at it as a good thing. Hey, I'm I know I can handle all these changes. Can he handle it? Final thing, John. Do you feel that the UFC is any more aggressive today than maybe two years ago where, you know, when it comes to finding a late-minute re replacement, I mean, at the end of the day, the UFC can scrap a fight if they can't. But you also, you don't want to just completely negate Fight Pass because you're putting such a spotlight on it that you want fights that can populate that streaming service for Sunday. And Fight Pass has their own wants for a particular fight card. Do you see more of an aggressive stance that the UFC tries to make a replacement happen on such late notice just because of all the masters they're serving? Yeah, I think uh, when you look at the UFC's model, I think the goal is just keep establishing that you're number one. That no, you see the competition is rising. We're having this conversation about Bellator and about 1FC and World Series of Fighting, looking for Aljamain Sterling. So they've got to do whatever they've they can to ensure that the audience that they already have are going to continue to go to Fight Pass because that's one of the things Robin and I were talking about that they're constantly pushing to grow. I mean, just acquiring Glory and, and K1 and the Eddie Bravo Invitational. They're clearly trying to draw the uh, drive the eyeballs to Fight Pass, which means the hardcore fans, the hardcore fans are going to be the ones that will tune into specific fighters on Fight Pass. All right, the card is going down Sunday night in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and we will have a preview show this Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern time, and then the prelims will be airing in Canada here on Fight Network going into Sunday's main card featuring Alex Oliveira and Donald Cerrone in your main event at 170 pounds.